Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about LiPo batteries and what beginners need to know to keep them healthy and safe. So the first thing you need to know about LiPo batteries like this one for an FPV drone is that you can't just put it in your drone, fly it around until the drone drops out of the sky because the battery is too low. Because if you do that, you've permanently damaged the battery and you're going to have to throw it away and you might cause a fire which is why it's very important to keep an eye on the voltage or the energy in your battery while you're flying. That way you'll know when it's the right time to land and keep your batteries healthy. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about today is storage voltage. So when you get a new LiPo battery, it'll already come partially charged, but not fully charged and not fully drained. This partial charge is called the storage voltage. And storage voltage is where each cell is charged to approximately 3.8 volts. Now don't worry if you're unfamiliar with cells in LiPo batteries, I'll talk more about what those are later on in the video. The reason your batteries should be at 3.8 volts per cell is because that's the most stable voltage for your battery. Any more or less energy in each cell can cause the battery to slowly degrade and lose its efficiency. This is also why it is important to charge or discharge your batteries back to storage voltage after using them. All right, and that brings us to more information about LiPo cell voltage. So the usable voltage range for a standard LiPo battery cell is 3.2 volts to 4.2 volts. Any lower than 3.2 and the battery may be permanently damaged and any higher than 4.2 and you significantly increase the risk of a battery bursting into flames. So normally you will start with a battery cell that is at storage charge, which again is 3.8 volts per cell. Place it on the charger, let the charger charge the battery to 4.2 volts, and then you go fly until the battery cell voltage drops to somewhere in the 3.5 volts to 3.7 volts range per cell, depending on how nice you want to be to your batteries and what your comfort level is. So you might ask, why not fly until they're all the way down to 3.2 volts? Well, you can, but that puts additional strain on the batteries, shortens their life a little bit, and typically when you fly and give the drone a burst of throttle, the battery will, what we call sag, it drops a little bit and as, it, as it's trying to provide all the power it can. And then if it does sag, it can go below 3.2 volts per cell and that can cause slightly more damage to the battery. Also, many drone batteries are created from multiple cells and you don't always know the exact voltage of each cell. So if you have a battery created from six different cells, they're not all necessarily going to discharge at exactly the same rate. And you could end up with one cell that's 3.0 volts while the other is at 3.4 volts. And in that case, you risk damaging that cell, which can cause problems for the entire battery pack. So that's why the recommendation is to land when your batteries are at 3.5 volts per cell or greater. You may also notice that after you land and give your batteries a few moments to recover from their hard work, the voltage will recover slightly and your 3.5 volt battery cells when you landed might stabilize and become closer to 3.6 or even all the way up to 3.7 volts per cell. Some people will even stop flying at just the right time such that the batteries are at 3.8 volts per cell, which we talked about earlier, that storage char charge. So they won't have to storage charge them when they're done. They're just um, at the right level so that when you take them home, they're all good. So you get a little less flight time this way, but it might be a trade-off you're willing to make. All right, so let's talk about battery cells. Drone batteries come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, cell counts, connector types, and more. Everything from the very small single cell batteries for a tiny whoop to a very large six cell battery often used in drones with five inch propellers. Yes, they do come larger than six cell varieties, but if you need one of those, this guide's probably not for you. When you add multiple cells together to create a bigger, more powerful battery, the voltage of the entire battery is multiplied by the number of cells that are in it. For example, a 4S battery, which contains four LiPo cells in series, would have a maximum charge of 4.2 volts times four or 16.8 volts. A 6S battery would have a maximum charged voltage of 25.2 volts. And the more voltage you have, the faster an electric motor will spin, which is also why it is important to pair the right RPM motor with the right battery voltage. But we'll leave that for a different guide. The important part here is to understand the relationship between voltage and cell count. 
I would also recommend having your on-screen display show the average cell voltage in your FPV goggles. That way it won't matter if you're flying a 4S or a 6S battery. Either way it will show you the average cell voltage and you will get used to using that value to decide when to land and not the combined value of all the cells. Any LiPo battery made from more than one individual cell has the potential to have cells become out of balance and ideally you want all the cells in a single battery to be at the same voltage at all times or as close as possible. So to help you achieve this, your LiPo charger has a charging option called balance charging. Some chargers will also split the charging up into fast charging and balance charging phases when they will first quickly charge up the cells to something close to the fully charged and then slowly top them off while checking the voltage of each individual cell to make sure that they are all equally charged when finished. For maximum health, you should always balance charge your batteries. This is also why your two cell or greater LiPo battery has a second plug on it. This second plug is called the balance plug and is used by your charger to individually monitor and balance charge each cell. It's also important to monitor the voltage of each cell in your battery from time to time. So all LiPo chargers, which are capable of charging a 2S or greater battery, should show you the voltage of each cell in that battery. If you notice that after you're done using a battery that one of the cells is significantly lower voltage than the others, then you know it's probably time to retire that battery. And that brings us to LiPo battery charging. In order to maximize the useful lifespan of your battery, you need to know a few things about charging. First of all, never leave charging batteries unattended. When a LiPo is charging, the chances of a fire are greatly increased. A healthy, undamaged LiPo charged properly is very unlikely to catch fire, but FPV drones are not exactly kind to batteries and charging a battery that was damaged in a crash or over discharged, even if it doesn't appear obvious that there's any damage to it, still can be very dangerous. So the safest way to charge a LiPo battery and the one that puts the least amount of strain on your battery is to charge it at what we call 1C or one times the battery's capacity. A 1C charge rate means that the current will charge the ba entire battery in one hour, assuming you're starting with a fully discharged battery at around 3.2 volts. For example, if you had a 1000 milliamp hour LiPo, to charge at 1C, you would set your charger at 1 amp. If you had a 500 milliamp hour battery, you would set your charger to 0.5 amps. And if you have a 1,500 milliamp hour battery, you would set the charger to 1.5 amps. And if you have a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, you would set the charger to 3.5 amps. Many batteries will list a maximum charging C rating on their packaging, which will be much higher than 1C, but I would still advise everyone to charge at the slower rate whenever possible. Another thing you need to know about LiPo batteries is that you should not leave them fully charged for any longer than you have to. Once a LiPo battery is charged, it's best to use it relatively soon and then return the battery to storage voltage once it's done. That's because a battery not at storage voltage is constantly degrading over time and that damage is cumulative. For example, a battery left at full charge for a month may have greatly increased internal resistance and when used, it will cause decrease in import performance and an increase in the amount of heat created. There is no magic number for how long to leave a light bulb fully charged. Leaving it for one day 10 different times is the same as if you left it fully charged for 10 days in a row. Or leaving it fully charged for one hour 24 times would be the same as leaving it fully charged for a day once. In general, most people find that leaving batteries fully charged for a day or so is acceptable. So if you find yourself with some fully charged batteries and no plans to use them in the next day or two, then I would suggest it's best to discharge them down to storage voltage. And that brings us to the discharge rate, which is also known as the C rating. So LiPo batteries are well known for being able to dish out a lot of power very quickly. And that's the main reason why they're the battery of choice for FPV drones. Although lithium ion batteries are starting to get enough performance that they're used in some uh, long range and slower drones. But the higher the discharge rate or C rating of the battery, the more of that capacity they can deliver continuously without causing any damage to the battery itself. And 
it's kind of highly debated how accurate a manufacturer's actual C rating is for their batteries, but you can be pretty sure that if you compare the C rating between batteries made by the same manufacturer that you'll get an idea of like which batteries can perform better than their other batteries. So most batteries also list a burst rating. So this is the amount of power that the battery can provide for a very quick burst, or only just a few seconds generally, without causing damage and will be higher than the continuous C rating of the battery. So having a good burst rating is great for those times when you want to quickly go full throttle. But remember that going all out for more than a few seconds might damage your battery if your motors can actually draw more power than the C rating of your battery. But generally it just means the battery is going to sag, your drone won't perform as well for more than a few seconds at a time. But the more you do that, the more that accumulates and it does degrade the battery's performance over time. So LiPos don't like extreme temperatures. Extreme heat, extreme cold are the enemies of a LiPo battery. Allowing a LiPo battery to get hot either during use or especially during the charging will damage them. And on the other side, cold temperatures decrease the battery's performance. So if you do fly in cold temperatures, keep that in mind and try to keep your batteries warm but not hot before you use them in cold weather. And once you're in the air using the batteries, drawing energy out of them creates heat and that helps to keep them a little bit warm. But you will notice that when flying in cold weather that they don't perform quite as well as you're used to. And their voltage will be lower, they will sag a little bit more when you're pushing them to their limits. And the end result is they just will have less power and shorter flight times the colder the temperature is. So LiPo batteries have a limited lifespan. Eventually after say 300 or so charge cycles, you'll find that most LiPo batteries have lost a lot of their performance and it'll be time to retire them. You'll see that you get less and less flight time and not as much punch as you did when the battery was new. And another indicator of battery being ready for disposal is puffing. Worn out or abused batteries will expand or puff as the components inside the battery turn into a gas. Finally, if your battery charger can measure the battery's internal resistance, keep an eye on those numbers. A sudden jump or having one cell have an internal resistance that is much higher than the others is an indication that the battery should be retired. However, how long they last and how many cycles you get out of your batteries will greatly depend on how nice you have been to them by not overcharging them, not undercharging them, keeping them at storage voltage as much as possible, and not letting them get too hot. So this has just been the tip of the iceberg when it comes to LiPo batteries and all of the information you can learn about them. Luckily, there's lots of other great resources that you can find, and I'll try to put links to those down in the descriptions. So you'll probably want to do some research and learn more about how to parallel charge your batteries, how to properly dispose of your batteries, learn the details about internal resistance and how it impacts your battery's performance. So hopefully that got you the information you need to know how to safely start using LiPo batteries in your FPV drone and keep those batteries safe and as healthy as you possibly can. Store it in your battery while you fly and that you will, oh gosh, this is so hard. Let's just start all over.